Hi everyone. Um, for assignment number nine, I wanted to share this article with you that just came out in the New York Times about uh, diaries from World War II. Um, and just for some background, World War II um, happened in the uh, late 1930s, early 1940s in Europe. Um, and it was basically the Holocaust. So the Nazis were persecuting Jewish people, um, which led to World War II. You'll learn more about that in high school. But the reason I wanted to share this article with you is because it talks about the importance of personal diaries during chaotic times. And I thought that was really relevant to what we're doing right now. And also, if you're kind of wondering why am I doing a diary about COVID-19, um, just to give you some idea of how you're now part of the historical record, um, meaning the things that you write down you may not think so, but uh, maybe looked back on in the future as what it was like to be um, a student or in middle school during the coronavirus pandemic. So I'm going to read the first part of this, and then you're going to do a little reflection, and then there will be a second part. So this article is called The Lost Diaries of War. It's from the New York Times. And it says, volunteers are helping forgotten Dutch diarists of World War II to speak at last. Their voices, filled with anxiety, isolation, and uncertainty, resonate powerfully today. And resonate just means if something resonates with you, it speaks to you. And I thought this front image was really cool of um, kind of what people's diaries actually look like, their actual journals. You guys are doing yours online, um, but back then, obviously, people had actual like, notebooks. Um, and these are some pictures of what their diaries looked like. And I loved like the illustrations on some of these. Okay, so please read along as I read. Anne Frank listened in an Amsterdam attic on March 28, 1944, as the voice of the Dutch Minister of Education came crackling over the radio from London. Preserve your diaries and letters, he said. Frank was not the only one listening. Thousands of Dutch people have been recording their experiences under German occupation since the Nazi invasion four years earlier. So the words of the minister, part of a government trying to operate from exile in England, resonated. Only if we succeed in bringing this simple daily material together in overwhelming quantity, only then will the scene of the struggle for freedom be painted in full depth and shine, the minister Garrett Bolkstein said. Frank responded by setting aside Kitty, the diary she had created as a personal refuge, and beginning a revised version called The Secret Annex, which she hoped to publish. Um, and that also, we may know that as the diary of Anne Frank. Other diarists persevered too, and after the country was liberated in May of 1945, they showed up at the National Office for the History of the Netherlands in wartime with their notebooks and letters in hand. More than 2,000 diaries were collected each a story of pain and loss, fear and hunger, and yes, moments of levity amid the misery. And levity is just basically something that's fun or happy um, or brings hope and joy, even when there's something serious going on. Here's another uh, photo of an actual diary. What I also loved about this one is how they would cut and paste and add things. And that's why I'm asking you guys to add pictures and other images into your diaries to add some more interest and in so we can kind of get an idea of um, the things that are being collected and are important to you right now. But unlike Frank's diary, most of these accounts never surfaced again. Scholars read them once to inventory them, then shelved them, powerful but mute witnesses to the horrors of war. Now though, the Dutch have launched an effort to transcribe the handwritten or typed pages into digital documents ready for posting on the archives website. More than 90 have already been fully transcribed. The most valuable diaries are the ones where they wrote about their own feelings or conversations they had on the street or with family, or how they felt about the persecution of the Jews, said Rene Koch, a researcher with the Dutch archive, now known as NIAD or the Institute for War. Holocaust and genocide studies. The best diarists are the ones with courage. Here are edited ex excerpts from several diaries that track the course of the war, beginning with the Nazi attack. Many people began their diaries that day, long before the radio address, as they worked to chronicle their lives in the most personal 